Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. says that uh, the Alex Ramble Bennett Ramble thing. Anyway, uh, hi, how are you? What's happening? What's how's your mother? How's your father? How's the family? I uh, uh, I'm just uh, I have nothing to talk about. I always say that, and then I go for the next uh, uh, twenty five minutes or thirty minutes or forty minutes talking. But I have nothing to talk about, really. See, usually I uh, I have a uh, a guest here, uh, but uh, if you look closely, uh, there's nobody there. No, nobody there. Uh, that's usually where girlfriend sits. But she's lame. I mean, literally lame. And uh, uh, so she went to bed early again tonight. Oops, there we go. Uh, so uh, that's where she normally would be. Okay. All right. Anyway, where are we? So, um, uh, so I, I basically have to take up the slack and talk here and uh, tell you what's happening uh, in the world and discuss it and then say what's pissing me off. And, you know, there's nothing really pissing me off because uh, last night I couldn't go to sleep. I took uh, one of those gabapentins that I take. And I take them about every other night now. I don't take them every night. Because I just don't like how forgetful it makes me. And that simple tasks, which I do by rote, I can't do any longer. Because uh, I, my, my, I'm too muddled from this, this drug they give me. And I've, I've been saying this before. You know, as you get older, and I'm about ready, uh, what is it, Tuesday, I'm going to be 79 years old. Oh, Jesus, did I make it that long? God. You know what it is when you when you get to be my age. The problem with getting to be my age is how many people around you are dying, people you liked and knew and hung out with and so on, and now they're dead. I'm trying to think who died this year that I knew. Well, Stan Lee died. I knew him. Hmm. And I'm sure there are a lot of other people that have died too. I'm sure Tommy Amaguchi could uh, could tell me who that would be. Um. Uh, but uh, we lost, uh, we, you know, you constantly are losing people and you go, gee, and, and I'm still I'm still alive. Uh, so anyway, so what happens is when you get this old, uh, they don't really uh, they they don't care what they give you for drugs. I mean, uh, obvious if it were legal, I'm sure my doctor would say, hey, you know, it's good to feel the feet on uh, heroin. <laughs> and you go heroin. Yeah, sure. You look, you're, you're, you're so old that uh, heroin isn't going to hurt you. Let's say you get a heroin habit. I mean, do you have to go to work? Uh, oh, hey, look, uh, you know, you, you've got some prostate cancer. It's not terrible, but why don't we just remove the prostate anyway? You have no use for it anymore. What do you mean? I jerk off and I like to have stuff come out every now and then. Well, anyway. They tend to uh, tend to feel that the they don't care what they give you because they figure yeah you're so old that you know what, what. so so gabapentin makes you loopy all the time and forgetful if you don't have gabapentin you're 79 years old and you're going to be forgetful anyway so they give you this stuff which really has a negative effect on you and especially me I I'm the kind of guy that. Uh, 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 all drugs, uh, act, a girlfriend brings it up all the time. She says, you just don't tolerate drugs well. And I don't. I, you know, I get higher than the normal person would get high on stuff. So uh, I, I, that, that's, a, that's a problem for me. So 
anyway, so I, I take this gabapentin, and what it's done is it makes me it makes me the sweetest, most wonderful guy. I mean, girlfriend said, boy, you've been so good during this thing where my f leg went bad. You've just been real helpful and been there for me, and you've you know you've been all you've been wonderful. And I said, it's the drug. It's the gabapentin. It has made me very nice towards her. So uh, if I want to stop taking if I stop taking it one day and I'm a little grouchy, she says to me, you're not on the gabapentin today, are you? Yeah, well, okay. So last night I tried to go to sleep and I had the gabapentin in me, but somehow I was all jazzed up. And I'll tell you later on in the show why I was jazzed up, okay? And so I was having a hard time going to sleep in spite of the fact I took the gabapentin. So I came in and I took a little half a, Zan a quarter of a Xanax, uh, which I don't normally do anymore because uh, I don't need it. The gabapentin puts me to sleep. But it didn't last night. So I woke up this morning at 1130 because <laughs> I got to sleep really late. And then I had to do Snyder at like 12.15, which is always a chore for me. And uh, I, I did it. And uh, I, uh, uh, you know, uh, but I was just out of it. I, you know, I, I, I have to, the little things that I have to do here, which are commonplace. You know, they're just, I do them by rote because I'm so used to doing them. I suddenly go, now what am I supposed to do next here? I don't understand what I'm supposed to do next. So that's a problem that I have with this drug. It just, it, it, I'm not as uh, focused. Like I'm, I wanna make sure everything's working. Is the audio signal going out? Last night I started late, cause I forgot to do it. And tonight is the video going out? Yeah, is it recording? Yeah, it's recording. But you know what I didn't have? I didn't have my coffee, and in the last 30 seconds of the last promo I was running, I had to run out to the kitchen and grab the coffee and run back just in time to push the buttons to get into the show. So anyway, that's that. You see, that that's it used to be that I would come on here and tell you a story about something interesting that happened to me that this day, and and there's just nothing anymore. There are no more adventures. Uh, my biggest adventure is I go to Costco and uh, they're out of salad, you know, or or uh, I go there and they're out of bacon. Cause there was always out of something at Costco. Or they do, here's what they do at Costco. I hate this when they do this at Costco. And I listen to me, Costco, you motherfucking cocksuckers. Listen to me. So you, you're always getting like let's say diet snap. All right. And so you go, you know, where Diet Snapple is, it's down the down the aisle and over to the right. And there's all the Diet Snapple. And I grab the Diet Snapple and I put it in the cart and uh, I'm on my merry way or that, you know. And all of a sudden, one day they decide they're going to move the Diet Snapple. Where's the fucking Diet Snapple? It's not in this aisle where it normally is. It's not in the aisle next to it. And, and you're looking, literally having to look all over the store for the product that you normally buy. And they do this all the fucking time. I mean, they moved, literally, one time they moved the sodas all the way to the other side of the store. Now they're all over there now, but sometimes I found that they move them down. And sometimes you have to look at the end of an aisle and they put them there. I mean, they're always changing where it's going to be. And uh, I'm sorry. Now, that's my adventure. So I could come back here and say, oh, well, I went uh, to uh, Costco and, uh, hey, guess what? What? Uh, they moved the uh, Snapple all the way down the aisle. Wow, what an adventure. I, know, I just don't have adventures anymore. I'm sorry. I really, you know, and I today I didn't work out. That was an adventure. It was supposed to go work out. <clears throat> and my throat has been like seized up on me for a couple of days now. The weather's outside is spiteful. And uh, uh, although it was nicer today, what's the temperature now? It's actually 50 degrees in New York City, and it was snowing a little bit yesterday. And then it's supposed to like be cold and rainy tomorrow and maybe snow on Sunday. See, this is my excitement. I have no excitement at all. 
Uh, the biggest excitement I have is sitting here watching the numbers of people who are watching this show go up as the show goes on. But anyway, um, so you know, and 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 uh, um, usually when I when I was working and had to go to work every day, at least coming home somehow there would be an adventure. You know, anytime you take the subway, it's some kind of adventure going on there. It's something you can talk about. You know. I saw a mariachi band. They came through the train today, you know, something like that. I don't have these adventures anymore. You listen to my life in the passing lane, and you think I had the most exciting life anybody ever had, and I really did. I had a very exciting life because I had lots of adventures. But I realized that if I, I – and I, I said that that was a work in progress because even though I ended it a couple of years ago, I would keep adding chapters as things happened. And I call maybe addendums or whatever, um, or add-ons, and yet nothing has enough exciting has happened that I can do another episode of Life in the Passing Lane. Nothing really has happened much since the last episode, so I don't know. We got to go somewhere. We got to go on vacation. Uh, we got to do something, you know. Uh, but, uh, uh, so I sit here with my cup of coffee every night. This is, uh, uh, the kind I get from Pete's. I can't remember the name of it. It's a very fancy name. Mm. And I love it cause it's really good. You know what, you know what Starbucks has now in K cups? I gotta tell you about this. Have you heard about this? Starbucks double caffeine coffee. It's called Starbucks Plus, and it's, they have it in a roast, and they have it in a lighter blend, and uh, I get it in the K-Cups, and it's supposed to be a double jolt of coffee. So I figure, you know, with this, with this gabapentin and stuff making me woozy, I'll take the, now see, this is an exciting adventure I've had, new coffee. Um, I get the uh, the uh, the uh, Starbucks Plus, so I sent away for the dark roast because dark roast has got to it's got to be heavier coffee, right, than light roast, right? Okay, so I uh, ordered the dark roast in the K cups, and uh, it came today. And uh, I got to tell you, I've been I've been using the lighter blend, and it's double the caffeine. And you would say, well, boy, that must make you really jittery. It must make really wire you out. Doesn't fucking do a thing for me. Coffee doesn't work anymore. And I, tr I only take like two, I only do two cups a day. Although they say if you do four cups a day of coffee, it's actually good for you. That was the latest stuff. Of course, then in a couple of years, they'll come out with something saying it's bad for you. But right now it's good for you. So here's to, here's to you. And uh, uh, People say, well, then how do you get to sleep at night if you do if you do uh, coffee every night on the show? Because I used to do tea. And uh, my answer to you is, uh, I go to sleep. I, <laughs> I just, it, coffee just isn't working on me anymore. Hey, that's exciting. That's, uh, let me write that down in my diary. Yeah. Um, but uh, let me see here. So I was complaining about Costco. What else could, could I complain about? You know what I'm going to complain about? This got me yesterday. Here, here's, a, here's excitement for you. Uh, I had to uh, update my, uh, my Macs. Yeah, because uh, the, once in a, once, about once every other week, Apple comes along and says, we have a security update. Which makes me say to myself, what do you mean? You didn't get it right in the first place? You know, you keep talking about how, how, how wonderful your security is and yet you got updated every two weeks? Or we have, we have a new update for Safari. Now, I don't even use Safari, but unless you update it, that updates, you can't just say, I don't want to update it. Just don't bother me. I have no desire to update. At least on Windows, I can uh, sit here and tell it not to update for 90 days. And then when the 90 days is over, excuse me, I've got to sneeze here. Hold on. I'm, in fact, I'm going to turn off my microphone so I can blow my nose. There we go. Okay. Now I won't have to sneeze. I have the world's ugliest sneeze. That's exciting, too. 
Anyway, where was I? Um, oh, yeah. So, uh, you know, I can tell Microsoft, hey, I don't want to upgrade. I don't want to update for 90 days. And then when the 90 days is up and they ask me if I want to update, I say I don't want to update for another 90 days. And I don't have to update unless I want to or I can do it at my discretion. And then when I do it with Windows, when you update, maybe it takes, God, uh, it, 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 sometimes it takes 10 minutes, all of 10 minutes to update it, right? Now, Apple comes along and goes, uh, you've got to upgrade because we have a security update and we're upgrading, uh, updating iTunes and we're updating Safari and you've got to do it because it, we're going to keep pestering you every day until you do it. You can't turn off the pestering or you can't say, well, I don't want to update this one. I'll, I'll wait for the next one. No, you've got to do it. So eventually I go, well, you know, this thing's nagging me every day. I may as well do it. And I go to my machines. I take the uh, stream offline. Uh, uh, maybe sometimes I put on the autopilot, which they have at the, uh, at the uh, uh, server. Or I just turn it off because nobody's listening to the fucking thing anyway, the 24-7 feed. Um, and so like yesterday, I, 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 oh, listen, we just want a security update and uh, we just want to do a security update to Safari. Okay, fine. All right. On my old machine here, it took, ready for this? An hour. An hour. On my other machine in the other room, which is a fast little machine, it's a, it's a, it's, it's the, uh, what do you call it? The, um. Um, a Mac mini Mac that I bought from Phil that's really juiced up. It only took it 40 minutes. And this other one I have here took me 45 or 50 minutes. Now, I got to tell you, this isn't much of an upgrade that was going on. And, but it goes on forever. And it keeps going on forever. Some people want to use their machine. Some people want to get to work. I got to blow my nose again. Couldn't hear that because I turned off my mic. Okay. Anyway, the point I'm making is, what's with these these 50 minute, uh, uh, 60 minute upgrades? You know, I found out once. You know, what I did once uh, because I had a machine that went bad or something like that, and uh, they had an upgrade, and I did the upgrade, and it fucked up. Something fucked up, and then I had to go to my backup drive and reinstall my entire operating system. And believe it or not, when I did that, it also installed the new upgrade, the thing that they were going to put in in the first place. And where the other one, it was taking up to 45 minutes. This one did it in 25 minutes. So what is, what is Apple's problem? And don't they realize that people want to use their computers? They don't want to sit. And if you, you know, even upgrading your iPhone sometimes takes a half hour, 45 minutes. So uh, fuck, fuck Apple. Fuck Costco. Uh, fuck, uh, who else did I, who did I, else did I complain about? Say fuck. Anyway, fuck the whole world. Anyway, fuck Donald Trump. While I'm at it, I may as well get him into the mix. Boy, he's got, he can't be sleeping well at night. Oh. It just gets worse and worse for him. Um, it's just that, how, how can, well, well, we'll get into this later. With, I'm sure Phil will call and we'll, we'll, we'll get into it. But how you can, how, how his followers can accommodate his lying. He's constant lying. And it's not like we're sitting here going, hey, uh, he's a liar. We don't believe what he says. It's not that he he lies because he changes his story every day. First, uh, you know, on this whole thing with, uh, with uh, the, uh, the payoff to the uh, Playboy Playmate, uh, uh, he denied it altogether. He said, I don't know a thing about it. And then all of a sudden, it's one thing. So now we're into, well, you know, the payment tour really wasn't blah, blah, blah. Wait a minute. Didn't you say you didn't do it? And now you say you did? Uh, isn't that what we call, uh, at least in uh, professional circles, uh, fucking lying? 
you know, isn't it? So anyway, but as exciting as my life gets, it's just the dullest, dullest life one can possibly have. And actually, I keep thinking about maybe making it exciting. Just telling girlfriend, eh, fuck it, leave your job. We'll figure out how to survive. You're making money off of your Social Security. I'm making money off my Social Security. And then we got money in the bank, and I've got a, a small uh, pension from my union. And uh, together we could probably, uh, oh, I don't know, Together, uh, we could maybe get along on, on that money. Uh, together, it would become to, you know, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 a year just in, in those things. So uh, why don't we do that and then go, like, live in uh, uh, France or Spain or somewhere. You know, I don't want to go to South America. I don't like South America. Neither does Trump. So that's the one place I could go. Trump probably isn't going to go. Uh, anyway, so uh, I've got to do something to jazz up my life, which is very unjazzed as it is. And I feel like I got to go to the bathroom too. I eat these protein bars, and they've got uh, artificial sweeteners in them because they don't have any carbs. And but the one thing they do is they give me the trots. <laughs> but I like them. So I think I, I think I took one earlier tonight, and I think maybe it may have to start exploding. But we'll we'll sit here and hope that I make it through the show without. See, there's more excitement. Will Bennett shit his pants on the air, or won't he? Oh God, life used to be so exciting. It used to be so fun filled, and then, you know, this, yeah. The most exciting thing that's happening to me is, you know, the legal action with the apartment. That and next month I have to take a test for my prostate to see if my PSA has gone up. It went up last time. See if it's gone up. And, uh, you know, uh, that's exciting because I could have prostate cancer. That would be nice. Not really. I think it's some, something else. Actually, what it was, my yeah, all of a sudden it went up, and I couldn't figure out why it went up. And then I read that your PSA can go up if you buy, if cycle, and I use the life cycle at at uh, where I work out. And about three days later, I took the PSA test, and it probably was a reaction to that. Also, my doctor told me to take an anti-inflammatory for five days before the thing. And that it'll probably make it go down because he thinks it's from something else, from some calcium deposit that I had. So I'm like, because he's gone in there, he doesn't see a thing. But, you know, I figure uh, something says like, well, you know, so-and-so is going to be on January 3rd. And I go, that's near when I have to have my test. And I, w I will not be able to watch that without knowing I have prostate cancer. You know, I, that's me. That's excitement for me. I put excitement in my life by terrorizing myself unnecessarily. Do you realize that? So anyway, uh, I've got a lot of people watching this, uh, and I'm uh, acting like I'm crazy here. So that's good. That's good. Uh, not a, and if you used to listen to me in radio, this ain't as interesting either, is it? You know, it's all fucking dull, my life. Let me turn on the f fucking phones. Then we can do the fucking show. Okay, put myself online. Uh, okay, we're 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 going. Okay, it's time for you to call me. And if I have to go to the bathroom, I'll have these guys talk to themselves. Okay, is that is that is that a deal? Uh, our uh, number, if you don't know how to call us, go over to gabnet.net. Over on the right-hand side of the page, the whole tutorial on how you can call us. Also, while you're there, you can. The picture is the program is live. The video is live on that page right now. So, so have a good time. Okay. Uh, hey, hey, guess who? Guess guess who's already here? There hey. he is. So, uh, I I wouldn't worry about the uh, level of uh, PSA that you have now yeah even if it goes up it's natural that it goes yeah. up as you age yeah i guess so i guess so so anyway uh, you ought to know you don't have one 
well, that, I'm trying to lose weight. And uh, <laughs> didn't really make that much of a difference. Yeah. Well, your PSA is uh, is uh, what? It's zero now, right? Yes. <laughs> it's zero, and uh, it's been tested a couple of times, and it's been zero. Yeah, yeah. So that's how they get rid of it. You know, we're going to find, they're going to find out like 200 years from now that this was the wrong way to deal with the prostate. <laughs> you know? Well, I, I've got a feeling that, uh, you know, there are ways of having good prostate health. I don't know what they are, and at this point I don't really care. But, uh, you and know, there, and neither there must be ways of dealing with it. And neither do, if I want to get a younger audience, neither, neither do they. If we keep talking about prostate problems, you know. Face the fact that it, you used to be number one, 18 to 35. Now you're, you know, number, number 630,000. Uh, no, uh, uh, no, I'm, I'm number one in, the, in, in, in my target age group, uh, which is uh, 70 to 75. So, you right. know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, Geritol is, uh, you know, they'll probably oh, offer to advertise. there's an old term. I don't think they make Geritol anymore. No? No. Geritol was for old people, right? And I never yeah. could figure out what Geritol did or what the fuck was in Geritol. No, but they advertised a lot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They were proof positive that they, if you advertise, people would buy a product. Well, what was their slogan? Geritol. Uh, something, uh, something, something. I don't. I don't remember. Well, but, let me look. Uh, let me see. Do they have Geritol here? Let me. Let me uh, uh, look up on. Uh, uh, Advertised uh, everywhere, right? Yeah, it was everywhere. It was everywhere. Geritol. Uh, yeah, Geritol. M well, they have multivitamin tablets now. Okay. Uh, but wait a minute. Do they still make Geritol the liquid? Yeah, they do. It's a name for various dietary supplements, past and present. Geritol is a brand name for several vitamin complexes plus iron or multi-mineral products, both in liquid and tablet form. Uh, now, my, it contains iron. Now, my question is... So do Flintstones. Yeah, yeah but does, that, <laughs> does, it, does it fucking matter? Will it... It's, huh? Well, it, it's made out of old Buicks. <laughs> It's well, made out of old Buicks, right? Hey, as long as it helps with ED, nobody cares. Erectile dysfunction, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Yeah. I love how on uh, when you watch these ads on TV for all these diseases, they're always using initials. Do you have ED? You know. Yeah. What? What? <laughs> educational deficit? What? You know. You know, uh, every time I see that uh, commercial for Bounce, where the guy's got wrinkles in his shirt, it reminds me of uh, what you had said, Alex, about uh, you know you make up a problem, and well, then this was my theory. Come up with my, my theory of advertising: what you do is you right. create a problem, and then you supply the product to solve it. Yeah, this, this so this Nebish is in a meeting with uh, four or five Japanese buyers yeah. and uh they're looking at him like he's from outer space because his shirt's all wrinkled yeah. then they show him sitting in a sauna trying to uh get the get the wrinkles out of the shirt then he uses bounce and he goes back into the meeting with the same shirt and the people buy and he and he's jumping up and down yeah well uh, y you know uh i'll give you a good example of my theory hello charlene hey. hi <laughs> my theory uh Remember years ago, and, and Charlene will remember this, uh, they started having a whole thing with vaginal hygiene deodorant sprays. <laughs> or is your dog getting enough cheese? Well, no, 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 no. But they, they, <laughs> they, uh, they advertised to women on this. And it, I don't know, yeah. it was called, what was it? Something spring or something like that? Vagisil. Or, yeah. No, no, yeah. not Vagisil. No, Irish, Irish spring was a soap. No, but this was, uh, it was, uh, 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 anyway, they, they were feminine hygiene deodorant sprays. Mm -hmm. Now, to begin with, how many women knew that they even smelled down there? Could they kind of get in bed and then double themselves over and go down there and take a sniff? Don't they douche? So what this yeah. company did was made them feel insecure that they might have right. feminine, you know, a feminine uh, odor. Yeah, Alex. I remember back in the days when I listened to you, um, there was a guy, he was a comedian, Chris Rush. Yeah. And I think you had him on or something. Mm -hmm. But he used to do a bit. I, I had it, like, I think it was in a Playboy magazine. They gave you a free record. 
inside like a, a vinyl mm -hmm. and i got it when i was young and i played it and it was so funny he's like crotch on television smelly crotch on television <laughs> yeah yeah but i, I mean, remember being but, a young girl but, but, like you know but, i probably was like maybe but 14, what they did 15. was they they supplied women with this insecurity that you know god forbid some guy should start going down on them and the odor would be too much to stand <laughs> which quite frankly has always been the case but anyway uh mm -hmm. So they made women go with this feminine hygiene deodorant spray. The only problem with the feminine hygiene deodorant spray and the douches, the various douches they came out with to take care of your insecurity, mm -hmm. was they completely ruined what they called the flora and fauna of the vagina. They're no good for you, right. They're I know, it's, it sounds like right. she's growing flowers in there, okay? But she's not. <laughs> And it ru literally a lot of the women. pH. It ruins the pH. Ruined the pH factor, is. yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, they were very bad for women, not good, but they created a. Massingill. That was the douche. Massingill. Yeah. Here for the four, fourth name. night in a row, ladies and gentlemen. Fourth night in a row. Rob Alfano. Hello, yeah. fourth Hooray. night. I like Rob. Hey, good, good evening, everyone. Yeah. He started that Woot thing last By night. By the way, I got to tell, tell you about Woot. Can I, t I tell yeah. you about it? I'll tell you about it. And I was waiting for you to come on tonight, Rob, so I could tell you the story. So last night after the show, I said to myself, I looked it up, and I wasn't completely sold on this, uh, what was it, G... QNAP. GNAP. Q. Uh, QNAP, QNAP, uh, which is a, uh, a thing you use to, to network hard drives in your home, right? Again, I do that so I can watch stuff on my TV set that I have on my hard drives, okay? Um and uh, I was looking for a new way to do it, because, you know, and this looked like a pretty good thing. But after the show, I looked at it and I looked at it. And to begin with, they weren't going to be able to deliver till after January 1st. And secondly, even with your prime. Yeah. Yeah. Know, Woot doesn't it doesn't do it uh, doesn't ship it's prime. A, it, actually, it doesn't ship two days. It's just yeah. free. Okay. And I also right. didn't <laughs> see where it it served DL, DLNA. It does. Well, I, I it didn't say anything there to that effect. Yeah, and I but didn't, it does. I didn't want to get it and not have it work. Okay, so I called up Woot and I canceled it. Okay, so today I go to um, I I go to um, Amazon and they've got it. It was one hundred and sixty nine dollars, right? They've got it for two twenty nine, but then for two eighty nine they've got like a four disc version of 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 qnap and it said dlna it made specifically said dlna <laughs> so you can run it on tv sets and so on now i figured well maybe this is the one i want and then i looked and it said it it uh, uh 289 dollars or zero if you use your american express rewards points so I never knew what these rewards points were. So I went online, I figured it out, and I went on and I ordered this drive using my American Express, and it used up most of the rewards points that I had, but the rewards points paid for the whole thing. Cool. Oh, wow. So I'm and getting my. I'm, um, so I'm getting. I'm getting their. I'm up. getting their 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 better version of their product. Uh, and one that says it, 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 all its stuff, it says DLNA, run it on your TV set. I, so I was very certain about it. Also, it I checked it out. The other one does. I believe me before I, before yeah. I bought it, I, I watched all the reviews. I read the, I read the specs. Yeah. It does all that. Yeah. I just didn't want to, I, I mean, I just didn't want to spend that much money. I didn't want to go past 200 bucks. Yeah. This one, this one also has four, uh, uh, right. Four drives. Four drives. And you can put one in if you want to. And it'll right. work with do, just one. Do the one. drives have to match? No. Sure they do. Oh, not in the Drobo. What do you mean? They have to match in size? No, they don't. Not in the Drobo. What the hell are you doing? You can't do you can't do RAID five. I, I happen to have five eight terabyte drives yeah. that are exactly the same. But in a Drobo, uh, you do not have to have well, the same Well, then you're not doing drives. RAID levels. No, you're not, you can't, maybe you, not. You could put five separate drives in there, correct. But you can't do a RAID level without having the exact same size what's drive. A, what's a RAID, RAID doesn't what's a work RAID, that what's way. A RAID I know. Level. I happen to have the same size drives. Yeah. What, do you mean by a, what do you mean by a RAID level? 
So there's RAID 0, which is mirroring. Take two drives, yeah. put them in. You, if you put two one terabyte drives in, you only have one terabyte of space, mm -hmm. but every write that's written to that one drive is written automatically to the other drive. Yeah. That's RAID 0. RAID 10 or RAID 1 is um, where you, you – it's 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 the mirroring it's um you have an extra you, drive i think you you get the fastest uh raid level uh mm -hmm. raid five gives you the best the problem with these raid levels is that there's a high overhead on them mm -hmm. so the raid one has got the highest overhead so if you have two one terabyte drives by the time raid is basically it's protection OK, mm -hmm. so it's protection. Copy. So if one drive goes out, you can put another drive in and it rebuilds the other drive. Right. So you get two drives in there or three drives in there, all at RAID one. You pull out one of those drives, mm -hmm. you pop one. in a fresh drive and it automatically with the with the information that's left, it builds the uh, that fresh drive out. That's what professional okay, but what storage now? uses. Let, and I have what RAID now? six. Raid and six is so uh, you get two, two, you get two drives, you, you get two, two drive failures. Right, right. Uh, yeah. And the reason why the reason why uh, organizations do that is because the larger the drives, the longer they take to rebuild. So if you're doing a raid five and you only have one spare in there, mm -hmm. your drives are working extra hard not only to do its normal processing for business, but to rebuild the other drive. So there's a higher Kate, right. there's a all higher right. chance all you're right. more vulnerable to lose another drive and if you all do right. you've lost all your let's data. say i don't care about that all i want is for this stuff to work on the network well you don't want to lose your drives you know drives will go out i don't give a shit okay let's say i don't give a shit for a moment you know, if you don't give a shit then, then it doesn't matter you yeah. could put five drives in there and you could have five times how whatever size you yeah. want that's called right. jbod just a right. bunch of disc yeah right yeah and, and you don't have, but the, you get better performance with RAID. Yeah, and uh, so so my, what, but no, but wait, my let unit me ask has you a question. SSD. Yeah, but let me, uh, uh, cash. Look, I, uh, I don't. We don't care what your Drobo has. Uh, here's here's what I'm asking: is what a, what a, uh, if I put in one drive, it's going to record mm -hmm. all my stuff to that drive, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. If I put in a second drive, is it going to record stuff to that drive too? It depends on the RAID level you set. What if he's just doing a JBot? If you're doing JBot, yeah. So it, he he records to the one drive unless he tells it to record to the second drive, or he uh, fills the one drive up and it starts overflowing to the second drive. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, um, it's it's what they call just a bunch of disks is or a dumb disk. Mm -hmm. So it'll just fill up one drive, then fill up the next, and fill up the next. Can I decide it'll, it'll what show I, can, you? Can I however, decide? Can I decide what I want to put on one disk and what I want to put on another disk? I don't think so. No. Yeah. You'd have to then carve. You'd, what you'd have to do then is put a NAS. Well, you do that. The, the, the yes, you could because what you would do is you would uh, use the utilities that come with the QNAP, which is a NAS head, which is, stands for Network Attached Storage. Mm -hmm. And it, what that does is it allows you I to don't carve understand up any of this. So, but you know what? This is simple shit. For all this, the, is all a dashboard the stuff that you do. All of the video and all of the stuff yeah. that you do, the website is far more complex than this. It really is. Okay, you, yeah, you, but what you, I you want, oh, to... here's what I want to do. I want to have maybe four drives of four terabytes each. Yeah. And I want to have 16 terabytes of space to put video. So then you on. want, yeah, so then you want, J-Bot. You want J-Bot. Okay. Meaning you wanna, <laughs> you're going to put four, you're going to put four drives in there. Mm -hmm. And when you go through the setup process, you're going to choose J-Bot. Mm -hmm. As the option, mm -hmm. you have the choice of JBOD or a different RAID level. Yeah. Now, and and if I do the RAID level, then how much space do I have? It depends, depends on, on which what one. Ra RAID level you choose. Yeah. And it depends on the overhead of that RAID level. So, like I said, you get more performance, faster res response times. You're putting in the slowest disk you can put in, the 5200s or the whatever, the 5400. Well, I was saying we get the 7200. Yeah. Oh, you got 7,200? I'm going to get a 7,200. Yeah. Yeah, that's a oh, smarter okay. move. I should have done that. 
So you'll get 7,200 RPM speed if you, the reason for RAID is that what it does is it builds this grouping of these drives and it spreads out the files over those three or four disks. So you get 7,200 times three. Yeah. So you get that much, you get that kind of See. speed. It also gives you redundancy. The problem is there's an overhead that, that comes along with it, right? Yeah. So there you, so let's say for example you put four eight terabyte drives i'm sorry four four terabyte drives like you're talking about that would give you 16 terabytes of raw space by the time you take the raid uh overhead down you might lose one of those drives because what has to happen is if you're going to do a raid level where you're one of those dri drive number three goes bad you pull that drive out you put in another drive how do you think it's going to rebuild it it has to keep spare sp space yeah, available on, on those on, other drives on the listing of this particular situation it doesn't say anything about raid can, can i recommend but, but, that can, you down wait a minute i'm talking <laughs> phil I'm asking him a I have question. A, I have a, I'm asking a, a, him a question. Well, I, I have an, uh, something for, to tell you. Oh, boy. Go ahead. Oh, I, I think you should just download the software for the for the dashboard, and then you could just look at the dashboard and see, uh, you know, what what that device does. I know that. Uh, I don't think this one does raid. Yeah, it does. It does. Okay. Yes, it does. So, in other words, if I put in, like, say, two four terabyte drives, okay. How much space am I going to get if I'm say RAID five? You uh, can't be. You need you need three uh, no. drives. No, yeah. that the, there is some software out there in some of the consumer models. Okay, let's say I put do. four drive, four terabyte drives in each of the four slots. Okay, right. and now I go to RAID five. You go. You probably you lose twelve. One drive. What, I lose you one drive. Have, you, you probably lose ter yeah about four terabytes of space. And what is that being used for? That's being used for spares. So, if like I was trying to explain to you, if you put four drives in there, yeah. any one of those drives that goes bad, yeah, you're st you still you you're still serving your data. In other words, you won't know it. You'll see a red light on the front of the device telling you you got a bad drive, yeah. but your array will stay up. It'll keep running, and you'll still be serving files. Okay. So then you get another four terabyte drive. You slide it in there, and what happens is. The rest of those three drives rebuild that one drive. Okay. And so you that's can still how, operate. That's how, that's how enterprise works because if, you know, I sell, this is what I do for a living, I sell storage, storage arrays. See, that's why you understand this stuff, and I, it's a completely well, new you, world. You would under, it's not you know, like Damien so when I get, sells storage, when, too. When I get mine, <laughs> when I get mine, if I'm having problems with it, uh, can I call you? Absolutely. Okay, because I I'm probably going to have to because I don't. Yeah, know you know what? You're really you're technically more savvy than me. I would never be able to figure out the shit you do. Well, anyway, uh, would you? Uh, I guess I should get four drives. But then. for sure, if you well, yeah. I mean, if you want to take the advantage, the best advantage of that device, you would set it up with a RAID and 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 put the four drives because in I there. Because I found I found uh, four terabyte, uh, seventy two RPM. 77,200 uh, RPM uh, for 79 each on really on uh, uh, Amazon. Yeah. What uh, are, are they meant for a NAS? Because there's some some drives aren't meant for a NAS. Yeah. Be careful uh, with that. Make sure they are meant for NAS. Okay. So uh, then uh, there is one for NAS that's like 129. That's so they you want. want to make sure you get the NAS ones. Yeah, but I don't. I can only afford a couple of them. I can't afford, you know, a whole bunch. You can always add on the fly if it's like mine. You don't. You you can just use one drive, right? Uh, I think you need two. No. For what? Uh, to to start to use the system. He wants uh, to know if he can use one. I would one think drive. you could use just one drive if yeah, you want I to. I read put on. One in. I read on the de depiction of the whole thing from people yeah, talking it about it. That, yes, you can add one, and then when you add uh, two, it, yeah. it, it 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 picks up from that point on. Yeah, I don't know about expanding the RAID level. Mm -hmm. I don't know on those devices if that's possible. In some professional equipment, it is. Uh, actually, in all professional equipment, it is. So it should be. You put it in there, and what happens is the data spreads. You have to expand the RAID, the RAID group, and the data will actually 
move itself from one drive to the other. And so the, the, the usage of one drive will, will reduce and the other one will expand. So it tries to balance and it. And how does all of that show up in your, uh, on your TV set? Does it just show up as one drive? Well, it's not going to. Sh- it, it it could show up any way you want because it's a NAS device. So, in the software, you can create in the NAS software. You can actually create your own folders. Yeah. Just you know, it just and and like shares. You, yeah. You're creating shares, and then you can put movies in individual shares and individual folders. Like if you open up File Explorer on on. Uh, on your Mac or on Windows, you would see individual folders, right? Yeah. And 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 you could carve up that data any which way you want. If you have eight terabytes, you can make. You're not going to have one big eight terabyte. Uh, so what, you're not going to have what, one big what, eight terabyte yeah. space. You're going to make little folders that you need, a couple of terabytes or whatever. You're not going to make. So eight, what brand of hard drive are you using? So I'm. I you know. I, here's what happened. I just got an email from Egg, New Egg, there. Uh, that for some reason, my credit card. <laughs> you had the reverse problem. I was able to get through on Woot no problem, but they sent me a note tonight saying that my credit card un- authorization failed. So I need to, for some reason, I don't know why. I have to call them tomorrow. And so I'm not sure. I might look elsewhere for drives. Uh, but what I went with was the Seagate drives. I have the Reds. I, I'm using the Seagate drives that I watched. I you know I watched a bunch of videos. These are the ones that uh, QNAP used as the benchmark drives. Yeah, they're and, the ones that they. And they, and they how much were they? Seagate Reds. And how much were they? No, they came out. It was three. So they were. I have to go back to my email here. Give me a second, and I'll tell While you. you're looking for that, can I tell you that uh, if you get a uh, credit card with Adorama and you spend over, I don't, uh, do I don't want to do that. that. No, no, no. But the deal is, you get one year uh, no interest, and I, 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 and those, still, I don't do credit cards like that. I don't, I don't do like doing cards, that. No. I don't like no. taking out credit cards yeah. for just for a deal because it's no, not, no, no. It's, I, I, I buy all my equipment that way. That's fine. You use Adorama. We don't want to pay have an Adorama credit card. You know, I don't. So yeah, I don't. I don't like no taking interest. out credit cards. I don't care if it has no interest. I don't want it. Neither does my so, credit card. I guess you're not interested. No, I'm not so, interested. <laughs> no interest. So what I got, I paid 119 dollars, 120 dollars for these Seagate Constellation drives, mm-hmm. four terabytes, 7200 RPMs. They're on Newegg. Uh, for three, so the three of them came but out did, to three fifty nine. When you get your drive, does it suggest what kind of drive to put in there? What do you mean? Is there uh, the a suggestion Q-Nap. in the on the QNAP and their manuals and so on what to, what kind of drives to use? No, I just I, I anything that says see that these say the the the, um, the uh, these say Seagate Constellation ES and then there's a model number four terabyte seventy two hundred RPM yeah. one hundred and twenty eight meg cache SATA six gig throughput drives enterprise internal hard drive. Uh, so they had the word enterprise in there, meaning therefore a NAS. Yeah, but I, so, I, all I'm saying is, is that uh, it, suppose I took one of these 7200 that, that, that didn't say NAS on it. it would it still work? It, I don't know. I, I would have to say probably not. I would have to say probably. I, was, <laughs> no, I, I, would have to, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, you know, it might be a firmware issue inside the drive that wouldn't make it work in a NAS. Now, uh, Rob, I thought you had one of the Synology. Uh, no, I, I was looking at Synology. I never bought it. Too expensive. I really, okay. I saw this last night, $169, and I jumped on it. I really never wanted to spend uh, over 200 bucks on, on the device itself before I have to put drives in it. This was a good deal. I said, screw it. For 169 bucks, I'm ready to jump in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, let me see here. I'm looking up internal hard drives. Oh, boy. I can't type anymore. Hard. Well, the interesting thing to Google is difference. Uh, um, uh, let's just type in enterprise. Uh, enterprise. And they all have to be the net. same size. In other words, I couldn't do like a six terabyte and a four terabyte and a. Uh, you could, but then you couldn't have uh, a RAID. Uh, backup. What are you talking? What I didn't hear the question. He, he wanted to know if he could use a four and a six. Is so, oh. you you can't set up a raid 
unless you have the same size drives. Because if you understand how a RAID works, it, you would strand. So here's what would happen. If you did do it and it worked, if you had a 2 terabyte drive and a 4 terabyte drive, you would strand 2 terabytes. You would only be able to get as much space as the smallest drive. So the other 2 terabytes would be not usable. Oh, I see. Hey, okay. hey Rob. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, Rob. What industry uses this? You know, I, I don't. I don't get every the in, everybody, every <laughs> industry, any business that has storage area networks, uh, that that any company, any business, this is how they store their data. They would never just put it on a hard drive. And you, know, you talk well, about Newegg, and you make me remember. I worked packing boxes out here at Newegg. It's uh -huh. a Chinese company, mm -hmm. and there were all Chinese people there that did not really speak English. And uh, I ended up like uh, I Love Lucy. They let me go because I kept playing with the the belt. Uh, Shir <laughs> Shirley, uh, what I'm showing you right here is a five bay uh, uh, drive uh, called it's the Drobo. It's like a hard drive. It's got five hard drives in it. Yeah. Oh, I, I see. Okay. Once you do the green things, right? Well, the green things tell you that the drives are are okay. Uh, so it tells you the health of the drive. They're so if on. the drive, if the drive, yeah, if the drive was failing. Uh, that would you turn know something? This color. is probably pretty oh. boring for most of the people that are listening to the show. Look, look at <laughs> I Patrick. I don't think so. Patrick's I think anybody excited. Who listens look to the show's Jeff. got a computer. No, and, no, they and, don't and care. Uh, to begin with, they don't want to buy a Drobo because they're far too expensive, and I consider them a ripoff. Well, nah, they're really easy to use. No, and that's what I was going to say. Like a person like me, I don't really need a, a Drobo. Is that what it is? Oh, I so want every, to. You see, everybody is storing pictures today, and right. and, uh -huh. and that is really videos and pictures and baby pictures, especially people who have children, and and a NAS device is a especially one with a RAID level is a great way to protect that. This is forty-seven megabytes. Every one of my files is a monster. Right. So that's what I mean. If you're, if, if, that's like why a NAS different. device works for you because y you're protected. You don't have to worry about uh, what am I going to do to you know this this hard drive is dead or like what Alex does is he makes all these copies these disparate right. copies. Right. As opposed, it's a lot knows. easier just to have this this space and being protected with multiple drives running at once. And if one goes bad. Just pop in a fresh one, yeah. and, it and it automatically rebuilds. builds itself. I read in, uh, in one of the question and answer things on Amazon, somebody said, can I just put one drive in? And they said yes. Yeah, I think yeah. you can, but and, you get zero protection, and yeah. you've bought a very expensive piece of equipment. Well, I'm not buying this for protection, believe it or not. I'm buying this because I like the idea of being swappable drives. Okay, But if, there's no, but if there's, it's not swappable if you only have one in there. No, I'm saying, but if I have a couple of them and I, I can swap them, you know. But anyway, the point is that the reason. Well, I'm... wait a minute. Just just understand, though, if you don't do raid, swapping means nothing. OK. No. OK, because if you think about it, right, if you've got four drives in there and, and I you don't no, set them up, I as still RAID, have no idea what a fucking raid is. No, it's just I'm it's just a collection of drives and, and it's just a collection of drives, yeah. three, four, whatever it is. And What's they be, the they work thing? together. They work together in concert, meaning they are then think about think about their so in if I had two and they got a big I, ribbon if, around if them. If right? I had two drives in there, if I had two drives in there, they would work in concert with each other, right? If you set them, if you set them up as RAID, yeah, okay. If you don't set them up as RAID, then they're just two separate drives. So if you lose one drive, you lose everything on that drive. Hmm. What you, you what you have to understand is, in order for a RAID to work, every file exists on multiple devices, on multiple drives. So one file is going to live on multiple drives. So if you lose one of those drives, Backed the up. other drive will rebuild it automatically. Oh, if you have everything it. single drives, when you lose that single drive, it's not, it's not, it's not replicating data anywhere. This, this mentions it's, nothing about RAID on it, on, in the description well, it, of it. It has to do with the, with the setup. No, yeah, it, it, but it, it supports, believe me, it supports multiple RAID levels. Probably it supports RAID 1, RAID 5, and RAID 6. Well, it, it's a QNAP, so I, I imagine it does, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the less expensive one does, so I know that one well. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, let's not let's stop with this. It's giving me a headache. <laughs> I, but I'm getting it for free, so if it doesn't work, fuck it. 
It's and the Phil idol. Thought was gonna get ripped off. No it's more, the, Phil. Crap. No more, Phil. Oh, okay. It's, just, it's, the, it's the opposite of mix minus. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's what's interesting is you know you mentioned about how I'm good with stuff like this, uh, Rob, but I'm really not anymore. It used to be that I could get these concepts very easily. You could say if that you, to me, and I would get it, and I can't get well, it. I don't get it so anymore. Just Google raid levels mm -hmm. and then read about it quick. Like, There's a great Wikipedia page on the different raid levels yeah. and explains how raid works, what it does, and then the different raid levels and yeah. what they offer. I, I, I like what Forbin Colossus wrote on our, uh, on our chat here. Uh, raid kills bugs dead. Yeah, I was thinking that too. Yeah. Raid stands for Raid stands for a redundant array of independent disks. R A I D. I would say with a four disk unit that oh, you God. should use Raid I... five uh, because it's only going to use one drive for the backup. First, I got to be able to afford four drives. Okay. Well, then don't get four terabytes each. Get get two. I want four terabytes each. Oh, okay. I, if I could, I would put 12 terabytes in there. You have that much stuff? Huh? You have that much stuff? Sure, why not? I got that much stuff. Yeah, See, I don't. Right can now, you I, uh, Can you uh, daisy chain those things? Uh, so if he ends up filling up the uh, that because he has a lot of movies, can you daisy chain it with another uh, QNAP? You would just install, put another QNAP on your network. What's the difference? Why would you need to daisy chain them? Yeah, oh. just put another one on the network. See, right oh. now I have uh, I had one, two, three, four, five uh, network drives here. One of them went bad the other day, and I decided that I've got to do. So it, it was an, impor an important drive, but I wanted to protect my important drives. So uh, what I want to do is maybe start putting things all on something like this, so right. that I have all my That's movies and all my TV five. shows and stuff like that all on one. Forget about it, Phil. I'm sick of you saying Raid 5. Okay, Raid 6. Well, he's just trying to make a point that if you don't put a Raid level on it, then you've got a nice expensive NAS device there, and it's no different than the, the drives you got sitting there. Yeah. If you don't set up a But RAID. I've got more space on one you'll device. Have, you'll have more space, but you, you, you'll still suffer the same loss if you, the drive goes bad. You'll lose every bit of data that's on that drive if you don't well, do a I, I level. Quite frankly, between you and me, I can't see how it's going to take care of all my stuff that's on three drives on one drive. How big are those three drives? They'd all be four as well, right? You said they all have to be even. Oh, no, no, I thought you were saying, you, you say that again. What was your, you, didn't, you can't put, understand how. If I how? put four four terabyte drives in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, how uh, how does it back up all of those on one drive? Doesn't, it doesn't back it up. It just keeps, all it does is redundant array of independent dr disks. So what's happening is it is making copies of the chunks that make up the files and storing them in extra that's what the overhead is on a drive right so let's say it takes one third of every okay. drive and, I, and it holds really, it I'm, it's really i'm getting a headache here i really am <laughs> I, I, you know. even patrick understands patrick <laughs> i think even i understand patrick? So like it can re recreate wait a minute charlie it. the way that i guess would be the simplest uh explanation is if you bought four separate drives that were not raid and you put everything on each drive separately, then if one of the drives went, you would have a backup on the other three, but that's all your work. Every time you want to save something, you've got to put it on each of those drives separately. It would cost raid, you. And it would also cost you. What's that? It would also, if you're going to do it your way, that way, then let's say you had a two terabyte file, then you're actually storing two, four, six, eight terabytes. You're taking up more space than you would if you use the RAID. I also right. use Chronosync, and oh. on top of the Drobo, I have two four terabyte USB external drives, and and uh, once every few weeks, I back up to those drives, and what I back up to one Wake also up backs, through, backs up to the other. And I, so I use a program called ChronoSync. Alex is bored now, so 
Well, he's bored, but he's the one sitting with a dead drive, and 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 we're not. I don't even have the drive yet, and I didn't pay anything for no, it. No, I'm talking about the one you lost all your data on. I, there was nothing on there. There is nothing on there now. Your your drive died, so whatever was on there, uh, if you had the proper system, uh, would would be still be available uh, to you. I wouldn't care. All right. So what if it Luckily, was a drive that had shit you did care about? Well, then I guess I would be pissed right now. Right. But well, I can back. Rob I, can, giving you... I, I can back all of those up with just an external drive. Well, that's just another drive then. Yeah, and that one can fail. You see, it doesn't if you matter which up, one. It doesn't matter right, which not one. If I, not if I use fail. it as an archive and I put it away. No, but well, no. that's true. But then you're going like for like, one for one. So gig for gig, as opposed to if you have well, a four terabyte drive. When I get it, I get it uh, Rob, I will call you and you will tell me how to set this whole thing up. Yeah, okay. You know. And uh, meanwhile, I don't see anything on online that really says NAS drives that much. It, 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 uh, are. There are. Believe me, there are. So just be careful of the ones you get. I mean, uh, it goes, uh, uh, let me see here. What was it? Uh, uh, the, it red, uh, the uh, Seagate Red. Um, uh, there we go, Seagate Red. Uh, it doesn't say any, it's 5,400 RPM, the Seagate Reds. They're 80 bucks a piece. That's reasonable. And they're slow. They're slow. That's two terabytes, by the way, for the 80. But uh, Does this unit have like an accelerator, uh, like a turbo? Uh, oh, Jesus uh, Christ. I don't no, know, no. Phil. I I'm asking know. Rob. Who the fuck is asking you? I don't know either. He doesn't I'm, know either. He doesn't see I don't know which, which one he's got. I don't know. Oh. Uh, okay. Uh, this book. Oh, fuck. It, it's, it's a book about digital asset management. It's a big the one. Damn, the damn book. Damn, the damn book. And uh, He's got the damn book. Yeah, and it's and it's all about backing up and uh, creating a workflow uh, for digital asset management. Yeah. Is that like you know oh, that, that thing for, for idiots? Yeah. <laughs> what do they call that one? The yellow one that everything is for idiots. Dummies, dummies, dummies. dummies. The dummies. I got dummies. I've got, I've got a bunch too. of those. <laughs> That's how I learned IT. All the dummy books. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Oh god. Uh, uh -huh. Let me see here. Four. Four terabytes. I missed a lot. Did you? You talk about Marjorie, Alex, and I missed it. Or no, we didn't have time to talk about her. We were too busy talking about raids. Hey, unless Is unless Marjorie has, has unless Are Marjorie you? has hard drives, he doesn't want to know about it. <laughs> no, because you haven't said much about you know how she's. I mean, I think you mentioned that she's doing better, and it's like you know, not broken. He said it and everything, right? But she's still resting, I guess, a lot, right? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, oh, here's here's a drive. This is a, a Seagate eight terabyte Iron Wolf Pro, seventy two hundred RPM, NAS. For six thousand three hundred and five dollars. There you go. Pick up four of those. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pick up four of those. I think I'm going to buy a cheap one and then see what happens. You know. I bet uh, if you buy it from Amazon, you can always. I think. Can you return hard drives yeah. to Amazon? Uh, maybe not. I don't know. But if it's like eighty bucks, who cares? You know. Mm -hmm. uh, and if it's uh, seventy-two hundred, who knows? It probably will work. You know. Do you have some uh, drives sitting in some old computers that yes, you just pull out? Yeah, I have old, a whole bunch of old drives that I have. In there. Try them in there. You could try yeah, any yeah, drives. Stick them in. If yeah. they fit. Yeah. Oh, they'll well, fit. Yeah, if they're three and a half, they'll fit. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> enough of this. Enough of this. We. Oh, oh, wait a minute. We've got a lot of people listening. Told you. What, what is that about? We've got to do, a, we do a, a, an IT help show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Hey, he helped me uh, yeah, turn see, off my be, GoPro yeah. last night. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that I can do. Um, anyway, uh, where was I? Let's see here. What, uh, what else was happening today that was, in the, it, that was interesting to talk about? Um, 
CBS, let's see, CBS paid out a lot of money to these women who were complaining about 60 Minutes. Yeah. And what about the one that got $9.5 million? She was on that uh, show. Uh, uh, it was a CBS show. Uh, uh, the hell is the name of it? Uh, the guy uh, goes in and, and looks at trials uh, at juries uh, and, uh, you know, reads the jury or something. She was on three shows. She says that she was sexually harassed. She said something to the guy, uh, and then they kicked her off the show. And so they just gave her nine and a half million dollars, which was what she would have had if she was on the show. Nine and a half million for having somebody tell you you got nice tits. Exactly. <laughs> what? Yeah, bull, bull. That's it, bull. Uh, yeah. It was the name of the show. I've never seen it, but uh, she wasn't bad. I would not looking. want to be in business today. You know, I mean, it's just. If all somebody has to do is claim this shit and they get a payout. Right. Just to shut them up. You know. Hey, Alex, you sexually harassed me. <laughs> the word is harassed to begin with, in case people uh, well, don't know. Big deal. No, no, but I'm, I'm saying everybody says harassed and it's harassed. It's the, oh. it's the actual pronunciation of the word. But, you know, I uh, what was it tonight that I heard some story and I went, Oh, fuck, here's another person griping about something else, you know, uh, when they, yeah, I just, I just think that this whole Me Too thing has gotten way out of hand. And it's on our side, man. It's on our side. What do you mean it's on our side? Yeah, it's on the left. It's the, it's the left. Yeah. It well, sucks. it's not the left. You know what it is? It's, it's, it's McCarthyism. Uh, it's accusation without having to have backup on the accusation. All you have to do is accuse and somebody's life is ruined. That's it. Now, um, and, and we don't, we also put the, you know, we put the, uh, the onus of, say, Bill Cosby, we give the same weight to, oh, say, what happened to uh, my friend, uh, the comedian, uh, Louis, Louis C.K., uh, we tend they tend to equate the two as being equally harmful, and I got to tell you, there's a big difference between what Bill Cosby did and what Louis C.K. did. Yeah. And and to conflate the two as in the same category with the same weight and the same strength is, I think, disgusting. Yeah, but it's still it's on our side. Look what happened with uh, what's his name. Uh, our disgraced senator there, Congress, whatever. Oh, uh, Wiener? Wiener? What? No, no, no. No, no, no. The, um, the, the guy from Saturday Night Live, Al Franken. Al Franken. Yeah. I, I mean, they made Al him Franken. resign over just nothing. Yeah. He, he, mean, mugged he, a, he mugged a else. shot. You know, right. he, 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 mugged, he had a, mu a photo mug uh, with somebody, and I think it was probably consensual. Oh, there's uh, no, there's no way a Republican would have ever resigned. He well, have if, if I were him, I would have gone to the committee and give, told my story, and then mm -hmm. let them sh show uh, counter that story. That was a that was a gag shot that they took. Terrible, you know. And 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 uh, my congresswoman here, what's her name? Oh, the blonde, yeah. Gillibrand. Gillibrand, or as I like to call her, the cunt. Uh, <laughs> she, uh, you know, she loves to eat her own. You know, because she yeah. thinks this is going to put her in the presidency. Well, I ain't yeah. voting for her. I'll tell you I that wouldn't right vote now. For her either. She's a fucking whore. All right. <laughs> and I'm not talking about it sexually. I'm talking about it politically. She's a political right. whore. And uh, what she did to Al Franken. You know, I was never a big fan of Franken's only because he used to beat the shit out of me at pinball. <laughs> and uh, I never I uh, always thought they did this Air America thing. He was terrible. So when he ran for 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 the uh, uh, Senate, I went, eh, you know. Uh, but as time went on, I became a fan of his because he was a true believer. He took the right stance, uh, and, and I think Patrick would even agree with this. He doesn't agree with Al Franken, and neither does Phil, but he took the right stance. He was a strong leftist senator. And, I don't like a public and, and, and to 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 get him out of Congress was, I think, uh, just sad, very sad, you know. 
Now, and you can disagree with that, Phil, because you don't like his politics. But you have to admit that he was very, uh, a, a very good advocate for what he believed. You know, <clears throat> hey, um, uh, off the Me Too a little bit. Why are all of these people committing suicide? There was a meteorolo meteorologist yesterday, uh, 35 years old, uh, had LASIK surgery, and then and and then she commits she committed suicide. Uh, the other just yesterday, I think. Well, thank you for changing the conversation. Well, you know, something I mean, if it were something related to what we were talking about, uh, yes. Yeah. Well, I was done with that. You well, know, but we weren't. Got what he but deserved. We, but we weren't. Okay, go ahead. Bash Franken. It's, no, I'm it's not fun. Bash Franken. I'm not bashing Franken at all. I think I'm bashing Gillibrand because I think what she did is she managed to get rid of one of the most ardent spokesmen for the left in the United States Senate. All right. She did good. <laughs> yeah. Well, she's good looking anyway. No, yeah, not, yeah, she is. Not anymore. Not like, not like the uh, the uh, socialist. Casio. No, she's she's she's. I can I say that in this day and age, or will I get a Me I Too know. citation? Uh, well, she's a public figure now, so you know she's open to everything. As we would have said back in the back in the sixties, I'd fuck her. <laughs> <laughs> You but with my dick. Today. There's a term you can't use anymore. Right. I'd fuck her. Uh, that's uh, one of Dice Clay's uh, lines. What? Oh, oh no, no. He would say out. he would say I fucked her. <laughs> if he would try to come out now, remember they didn't like him back then. Now they'd really. Well, now like, they'd have a lynching party. Him. Yeah, he could yeah. never be. Yeah, I, I did, didn't. I didn't like him. what he did before. I mean, I I always found it sexist personally. When, at a That's time when sad. people weren't complaining about that. But that was what that. I thought was so funny about it, though. Well, because he went so extreme that but he you know, was, guys he, like that were he was extreme. doing He was doing an act because, I mean, I was talking yesterday to, uh, uh, two days ago, to Stephen Pearl, who, who knows Dice, and says, really nice guy, a sweet guy, yeah. you know. Uh, but that was an act he was doing on stage. That was the, problem right. was, the problem yeah. was the audience didn't think it was a character. And so he was spreading a message that was not a positive one. That was the problem with Dice. That's true. It's not a positive one. But, but people need to wake up and realize they went to see a show. Yeah, well, you're expecting yeah. people to be more intelligent than that. Okay. They went to see a show. This guy was not standing I mean, up giving a lecture of, on how to treat women. It was kind of like Uri Geller, who used to bend spoons with his mind. <laughs> well, you know, it was a very good magic trick. But he didn't pass it off as a magic trick. He passed it off as real. And that's what Penn Gillette, my friend Penn Gillette, hated about him, was not that he was doing a great magic trick. If he had said, hey, and that's an illusion, fine. But no, he tried to say, I can bend these spoons with my mind. And he actually had our government believing it. They brought him in, and they wanted to test him and see how he did it and if they could use him as a weapon and all kinds of things. You what, know. What's the trick? What's, what's the answer to the trick? I don't know the answer to the trick, and if I did, I wouldn't tell you. You think he had two spoons, one bent, one not bent? No. And they're, they're, then slide a hand? And... A, a, the amazing Randy replicated the whole thing without any problem, okay? Yeah. So it, it, it's, it's he not— He just died, right? It's not a big secret, okay? He you, was know, I, you, you know what comes to my, to my mind when you, you, you compare somebody like Dice Clay to, let's say, uh, Rickles? Mm -hmm. Like you were saying, and Yuri, and Yuri Geller, who he, he, he pawned himself off as a guy who can actually do this rather than have it be a trick, right? And that it was so serious that the government brought him in. Do you, did, Rickles never went on stage... Without saying, you know, I kid everybody, really. And he never, ever, his, but before he was off stage, he broke character, if you will, and always said something, uh, you know, like he always used to, you know, say nice things. You know, I kid everybody, you know, I, I'm a Jew and, you know, we all need to get along or whatever. Dice would walk off the stage. He would come on the stage and go off the stage as that character. The difference between him and Rickles was Rickles always would get like, you know, he would get a little bit, you know, human, human 
by the end of the act. Well, the thing is that with 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 Rickles, you knew that he was kidding. You know, right? Uh, that was his uh, yeah. yeah, and that Insult. was that's the, that's the point. Uh, nobody thought that Rickles was actually that way, and he could make. And he right. called. Hmm? He called you a hockey puck. You know, I mean, how bad? Well, is he that? he would do Jewish jokes. He would do black yeah. jokes. Yeah. He would yeah. call blacks lazy. So, you know, is he looking at me? Sammy he, Davis. Uh, he was funny. <laughs> He was he, very funny, and and he but, but he, he it, took advantage of the stereotypes. Right, but he right. but could could a Rickles That's survive in right. today's atmosphere? I don't think so. Because uh, you know everybody's taking everybody a little too seriously. Even now. Joan Rivers, Dean Joan Martin's Rivers. daughter, Dean Martin's daughter was on a show the other morning talking about that "Baby It's Cold Outside" song, yeah. and saying that you know the the stuff that her father did uh, wouldn't go over today wouldn't uh, there'd be problems with it today there was a there was a disc jockey somewhere who uh said he was not going to play that song anymore because it was uh you know anti-feminist mm -hmm. well let's uh, let's find out who that disc jockey is and never listen to him again i just read it uh, uh, last week. To explain that to her well no what is the reason why we can't listen to that uh, uh, I because it. because there's a line in there where he says um don't go outside. What did you put in my drink? Um, oh, and they think that it means like a Bill Cosby date rape. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, to begin with, That's when that why. song was written, there were no date rape drugs. Okay. Right. There were yeah, also I think that, it was fifty nine. Also, yeah, that that line. No, it wasn't fifty nine. Like it was forty nine. Truth or something. Like that. Uh, it was forty nine. Before fifty nine. Neptune. Uh, okay. It was a Neptune. Her daughter said something about fifty nine. It was a Neptune's daughter. 1949. That's right. Yeah, they showed okay. it. There were no date rape drugs. What did you put in my drink? Maybe you put a little alcohol in there. You know, whatever. Spanish fly. Yeah. They had Spanish uh, fly. Spanish Spanish fly. And also, there's the implication <laughs> that he keeps uh, touching her and trying to get her to did, loosen it, it was up. In a movie. She doesn't did really you, did, want It was that. in a movie. Did, did you ever see the movie clip? He's not touching her. I uh, know. I know. It's all bullshit. It's I'm, just, I'm, I'm just saying it. what the, the disc jockey was saying. Yeah. Yeah. And it was written by, uh, for, who was it? Was this? Frank Lesser. Les Lesser. Uh, and, his, and his wife. They, together. They yeah. wrote it together. They did a song every year for a party that they did. And one of the requirements to get into the party or be part of the party is you had to put on a an act of some sort. And that was what they did as the host of the party. They did this song one year. It became so popular among all their friends that they did it every year, and yeah. that the way it went. And, so, and somebody, and somebody at MGM like heard it and made it part of the movie Neptune's Daughter, in oh, which right. uh, the guy is he's, he's just wooing the woman. He's telling her, you know, hey, I, 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 I must go, but baby, it's cold outside, you know, and and can't, can't I stay? No, we just lost. Now, somebody came up with new lyrics to the song that yeah, makes yeah, it politically uh, correct. Yeah, yeah I uh, what's his name played it the other night. It's not funny at all. It's really uh, dull and horrible. I haven't heard. Really dull. Uh, uh, Jack played it the other night, uh, but I, I, it's just you know, I mean, that's the kind of political correctness I'm talking about. To begin with, the thing was written and and uh, performed in 1949. Put it in its context. Forget about today. No, you probably wouldn't write a song like that. But today, you know, then was then, and this is now, and uh, let's... That's like, you know, Alex, in some songs they say, oh, let's have a gay parade, and let's have a gay fair. And back in, like, <laughs> 1940, it meant, like, happy... Well, and when nice. I was a kid... Oh, baby, this colorful. global warming outside. Let me, let me, let me, I'm going to go to Patrick in a second, but let me just <laughs> say... When, when I was a kid... When, when I was a kid, that was a favorite song of mine. And you know what? When I grew up, I raped women all the time. See? You know. Yes, uh, Patrick. It. Yes, Patrick. My, you know, I, I wonder... I, I haven't been to any... Christmas parties in several years because I've been, well, not employed at a company, and I'm not a big party guy anyway, but I wonder if mistletoe is used in any parties anywhere. That's an in interesting idea. Three years, because 
everybody knows what happened when you walk under the missile. <laughs> Hanging on your zipper. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Well, on your belly button. Right. Yeah, so it's above, you know. You would do it at the party. You know, you would have them hang it off your tie or something. You know, I mean, but uh, we were describing our morals of today to something that's 70 fucking years old. You know, you know something? It, I, I got to tell you, I got to tell you that I'm going to be 79 in a few days, Okay. And one of the great you advantages... Look a day over 78. Thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, the one great thing about being 79 is that I don't have to worry about this shit. Because if I how, were how young... If, if I were young and I were dating today, <clears throat> if I were dating today, uh, I would... I, I, I'd, probably have ever, I'd probably be afraid to date. You yeah. know? How old I mean, Bill Cosby? Bill Cosby is in his 80s, somewhere. 84, maybe. And he's serving that time, right? I wonder what he's doing right now. Yeah, right. Sleeping? Well, he ain't nobody's bitch. Uh, Patrick. <laughs> Alec, uh, you probably remember when I first started on Sirius and uh, talking to you. Yeah. I used to date a lot. And then I got involved with the, my ex. And now it's for several years. And then I dated a little bit after that. I haven't dated in... Probably about three or four years now, because this whole Me Too shit and the the way that we used to talk to people is so fucked up. I don't want any part of it. Right. And I, I, I've said, you got to meet people on the internet. You right? know, when I first got divorced, I started dating pretty heavy uh, Match dot com, and I was spending so much. I was spending about four grand a month, and this is like in two thousand three. Yeah. Uh, I I was I was actually my you know, I was looking at my credit card bills. I was spending four grand a month going out to dinner and. Oh, uh, Jesus, drinks. where were you going to dinner? I, well, I I went to good places, you know, and yeah. and, and they were girls that I out. never even I never even four wanted to see grand, again. A thousand dollars a week on dates? Yeah, well, dinner <laughs> is two hundred bucks. I'll date you. I'll take it. <laughs> you should have just done the in and out. Yeah, I should have. But uh, no, I, you know that. And I finally, you know, re I got some girlfriends. It, it took about six, seven months until I, you know, because people don't want to date you when you first get divorced, you know, because you, you got stink. And yeah. uh, but but they'll go out to dinner. They'll go out to dinner with you, especially if you, you're spending a couple hundred bucks a, a meal. And, yeah, yeah, I'd go out with you. <laughs> you can. You can go see uh, Lisa Lampanelli in Connecticut in April of next year. Yeah, but she's not doing stand-up, I heard, right? She quit, yeah. She's yeah, I know, doing... but she got trashed the last time she did her act. She really? got what? Because she she's not fat anymore? by the audience. Because she's not, I don't think she can do PC. that anymore. Out here in oh, San Jose. Too. But she's not fat anymore, right? Right. Well, she was never... No, she's not. Last time I saw her, she wasn't. And no. she's not yeah. fat, and she didn't get funny. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I mean, she's not, she's no Rickles. I'm just saying, you know. She was really Joan insulting. Ripple. I thought she was decent on those roasts. You know, they, they had those celebrity roasts. I, I, ha I, I hated, the, Alex, I hated those celebrity roasts. Yeah. Alex, did you not think she's funny? I, I, didn't, said find that, her, I didn't find her funny he, at all. He, he worshipped her. He worshipped her. Mm. Yeah, I, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, I, and a lot of comedians I find funny. I mean, I have no idea why Amy Schumer is funny. Absolutely no idea. Her last Isn't name. she related to Chuck? That could be why, right? She is. Is she? She is. Yeah, I she's Chuck Schumer's uh, niece. Yeah. 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 Huh. Yeah. That's probably why she's funny. He's funnier <laughs> than she is. <laughs> <laughs> right. He is funny. It's pretty bad. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, Ray. Uh, Amy Schumer uh, posted a video of herself on Instagram today with her morning sickness, puking backstage. Oh, yeah. Is I she heard pregnant? Vomit. Yeah. yeah, and she did. She she videotaped the entire barfing That's experience in the toilet. Funny. World now. What the fuck? And that then people funny. were praising her for it. Oh, how wonderful of you to be so open and. Oh God, now they'll be. And all it was like so this is just internet. disgusting. It's mm. ridiculous. Is she got a raid five or a raid six? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I didn't do a bad thing by buying this thing, did I? Uh, 
Oh, Rob, what is what a do you mean? Why yeah, a bad thing? Oh, I don't yeah. Know. You just you just spend another six hundred bucks on three drives. Yeah, no. <laughs> oh, you got an external drive. Forget thing? it. Forget it. Oh, no, you let's not even get into it. Let's not forget about it. Listen to the rerun. Forget about it. Listen to the rerun. How's 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 Mar how's Marjorie doing? Uh, she's uh, you know she. She complained. She says my foot, my leg still hurts and everything. And then I, I she didn't come home till like two in the afternoon today. She oh. was out. Oh, she's at she's work. She was out better. getting her hair done and having some coffee, and and then she comes back and goes, "Oh, my leg is killing me." Well, oh, shit. <laughs> well, and then I come in to the, to the uh, foyer, and she's there with the mail, and she's just. She hasn't even got the cane. She isn't even using the cane. She's like oh, hobbling good, around though. without the cane. And I'm going. She should use the cane. I'm that going, will how you doing? She says, oh, terrible. I got to get to bed. <laughs> you know. Well, she uh, was with a like male. Lights? Let's put she it this was... way. She's walking better than Patrick. Okay. Uh, she, <laughs> was, she was with another male. Yeah. Well, that's okay. <laughs> I don't mind that, you know. <laughs> Uh, That's why she wanted to get to bed. But you know, I mean, she's I she, she by measures she's getting better. Okay, right. and uh, I I I assume that as the weeks go by. I mean, right now this is uh, this is two weeks since the operation, so she's got another four weeks of the uh, the leg brace, and then you know, then she can bend the leg if she can bend it. But she has to go to physical therapy, and you know, it's it's a long haul. Yeah. But she's back at work. She's going to work for a couple hours a day, not the full oh. thing. But she went back to her office after, what, uh, two weeks, I think, uh, since, since she got tripped and fell and, you know. Um, and um, she went back to work after two weeks, and her desk was piled high with Whoa. mail. You know, all <laughs> the mail and packages and stuff that had come in for the two weeks. She did a lot of work from home here, but the one thing she couldn't do was open the mail. You they know. could have messengered it over to her. You know, my uh, the same thing's happening at my store. My operations manager is on vacation. He went to Hawaii for almost two weeks. Yeah. And so other, other than processing the orders, any other thing that has to be done is stacked up in his inbox. When he comes back on Monday, <laughs> I got a surprise for him. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I just went on vacation. I was off. Uh, from work from the week of Thanksgiving. And so that was three days of work. And then there's the two days of the holiday and the following week through Thursday, went back to work on Friday and the entire time. Cause I said to myself, I'm not going to look at my work email. I carry my phone. I get my work email on my phone and, but I kept looking and I watched that number going up and up and up with all these unread emails. And I got to tell you, I was more stressed out by the end of my vacation yeah, that I had to get back to figure out what I was going to walk into than it is to go on vacation. I hate email. I mean, it fucking sucks. I came back on the Friday on purpose so that I didn't have to think about it over the weekend. So I went back to work on the Friday. I tried to catch up on everything so that I could have a regular weekend and then Monday hit the ground running and, and get back into the swing of things because this mo world we live in moves so goddamn fast. That you take a week off, ten days off, and and you're behind the eight ball, and, and you pay for it. People's expectations of how fast you should get back to them. Right <laughs> now, it's almost immediate. It used to be you mailed him a letter. You know, three four days later, he got the letter. That's and, true. Yeah, I know it's ridiculous. It sucks. Remember it liking sucks. for email? How great it was. Oh, yeah, boy, uh, I miss the old days. Yeah. Right. And you you wouldn't waste your time writing an email unless the person had. I mean, like you used to have to write a post-it note and walk over to their desk or whatever and leave it. Like, okay, is it worth it for me to do that? Does it need to know? And now just boom, everyone just sends an email and like you, you don't know what's important and what isn't. Right, right. And it, it you know, but it it's uh, 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 but anyway. So she came, we came back to a lot of mail, plain and simple, and uh, it, it's been. Uh, uh, but it's going to be a hard slog for her. But she's getting better. And uh, the only thing that is now, I mean, I don't think uh, she's going to take a shower for the next four weeks. She's doing, Yeek. well, she's doing sponge baths. So she's keeping <laughs> clean. 
Uh, That's good. Uh, but, uh, you know, to get her to stand up in the shag, to get into the shower with that brace. And then you'd have to cover it up with, like, plastic. And yeah, everything. yeah, she, you know. It's just too much trouble. It's better if she just does a sponge bath, and if she feels that that's keeping her hygienically okay, you know. Uh, then I just French. Huh? I thought they said uh, that she could take the brace off to take a shower. No, no, uh -huh. they don't want her taking that off at all. They want that leg straight at yeah. all times, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, because that that operation has to heal. It's interesting though. I saw the scar. So he took off the bandage when she went to the office. And there, you know, was some blood on the bandage and so on. But then I looked at the scar, and it's a nice. It's a. It's about this long. Wow! You see that, folks? It's, it's vertical, not horizontal. It's vertical, down the knee, and but it is just a thin line. And mm. guess how many stitches he took out? Thirty two. What? Wow. Two stitches? You know, they use glue. They use glue. Yeah, wow. they use glue. And you know what the glue they use probably is super, super glue. glue. Yeah, yeah. It, because it, I heard super glue. Like if you get a cut on your hand, it doesn't stop bleeding. You yeah. should like put super glue in there and go to the hospital. Pinch it. Yeah, well, I mean, also if you, I use some super glue tonight. Uh, if it'll stick your fingers together really tight. I mean, if, mm -hmm. you know, you you don't like doing that. I hate when that happens. But, <laughs> you use acetone to get super glue. But he said, oh, we use polish. glue, and you'll she said, you'll have hardly a scar at all. You have just a little thin line, you know. Uh, he said, if we did a lot of stitching, you'd, you'd have, you know, you, that, that would be a bad thing. Yes, uh, Patrick. Well, the best thing about my scar for my back surgery, yeah. I can't see it. On your back. Right. Well, Marjorie has a big one on her back from when she had the back surgery. Luckily, hers turned out better than yours. <laughs> oh, if she's got a scar on her back, what's that tat that women get on their back? Uh, tramp uh, stamp. Uh, the tramp, tramp, tramp stamp. Yeah. Yeah. Not anymore, but no, I think no. they're out, aren't they? Aren't they kind of out? I thought they, they, they were out when they got. What? What? A, you know, I, 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 I've been known to watch porn occasionally. Uh, <laughs> that's the one hard drive I want to back up. Uh, <laughs> Why do they call it a hard drive? Uh, otherwise, if it, if it goes, I'll back up. Uh, anyway, yeah. uh, <laughs> the um, uh, the preponderance of tattoos. Like if I if I run across a porn loop, and the woman is heavily tattooed. <clears throat> ditch it I, I mean I just I don't know they get these the tattoos all up and down their arm right they call them the sleeves the sleeves or whatever and some of them and some of them and, it's, and it's, uh, I see these guys on TMZ these rap stars who've got tattoos on their faces and it's not like they're coordinated you know hey, it's like a little something guys, here and then something over that, here and a uh, uh, huh the white supremacists that have all of this shit on their face, yeah. you know, things like uh, "fuck you, man," and all of this yeah, stuff. Yeah, but anyway, you think I'm, they can I'm get thinking, a job? Yeah, aren't I'm those your people? Yeah, yeah but yeah. I'm thinking, you know, you're only 21, <laughs> all right? right? Uh, what are you going to think of this shit when you're 70? Oh, right, they got and, think and, about and, and your grandchildren are going. Hey, have you seen Grandma's arm? What's that blotchy thing all over her arm? Right. You know, the that's good news is with those, they'll probably, nobody will ever, uh, there won't be any grandchildren, so that's a good thing. <laughs> on, the, on the beach at Ibiza, um, I was sitting there this, years ago, and there was an old man, really old guy, got to be in his 80s, uh, had a, like a goiter going, the whole thing. And least, it looked like he didn't, it didn't look like he had much time to live. And on his arm, faded away, just completely faded, was the name of a woman. And I kept thinking to myself, does he even remember who she was? Right. You know, yeah. that tattoo is so old, does she remember who he was? The, uh, the, That's how he I, remembers. I've never gotten a tattoo, and one of the reasons I've never gotten a tattoo is Two. I've never had a meaningful tattoo that I wanted to get that had something important in my life. Like I met one woman who won an Olympic medal, okay? 
and she had on her ankle the, the uh, Olympic rings tattooed. I could see that because when she's 90, she can look at that and go, yes, I remember that, you know. But we're Jews. We don't get tattoos. Well, no. If he, if Marjorie has one on her ankle. Really? It says, buddy. <laughs> yeah. It says, buddy love. love. Buddy. Yeah. yeah, it might be buddy love. Uh, yeah. uh, it says, buddy. That's why it keeps dropping uh, by. And, and she says she doesn't mind it. But then again, it's on her ankle. You know, she can always hide it by wearing socks or whatever. But these people who get tattoos on their face, well, I mean, next. do well, they really? Knuckles. They, they got they, knuckles. They, with, they obviously uh, have an idea. They're not going to live more than two years or something because they're going to regret having those someday. You know? Mike Tyson got like half his face tattooed. Right. Yes, but you know something? Because he's black. You know something? Mike Tyson did it in a way that was, I have to say, kind of artful. It is artful. Yeah, it was it was quite artful and, and a lot of people emulated it as a matter of fact. It's but, not all hodgepodge. Right. Stuff. It is a concept. It's, and the like rock the rock thing, yeah. the rock has a whole bunch of tribal <laughs> a tribal mm. tattoo on his arm. But that's They're because out. he's Samoan oh. and he felt that that oh. was tribal and and part of his heritage and it's a good looking tattoo but i'm talking about who's this other shit plan? where it's like a cowgirl uh, you know or rodman uh, that plan huh? boy? rodman rodman had some pretty ugly tattoos yeah yeah they're all over they're just random yeah. gnarly looking ones yeah. Yeah, yes let's see here who had, who had his hand up first patrick or ray hmm. patrick uh, patrick, uh, uh, patrick okay um i have a cousin um, and he had tattoos on his knuckles and all sorts of borderline gang stuff that he had from when he was like 18, 19, 20, and yeah. then he wanted to become a police officer. <laughs> he, he, and he is, he is a cop, but he had to go get all of that shit lasered off it's and it's not covered by insurance. Right. It's, it's, all, it's, it's out of pocket, and it's several weeks of the same fucking scar getting. It hurts too, so, I, think. Yeah. I had an installer that had a, one a, from the Navy. He was in Subic Bay and, and had you know, some Navy tattoos with the anchor and stuff, and then he had that lasered off, and it still looks like there's something there. But and he said it was very painful. well. The thing is, and I can't remember it now, but I know a woman who had her tattoos removed. And uh, you can ta you can remove certain colors, right. uh, but you right. can't remove others. I think black can be removed okay. Right. Uh, right. Red, I think, can be removed okay. But I think it's blue that they can't remove or green. Mm. And, yeah. uh, uh, you know, they can shoot as much laser as they want to there and, and not get rid of it. But, I mean, I would imagine in a few years somebody's going to have some kind of a process where they can remove... <laughs> Uh, eat me? Is that what it says? <laughs> oh, did you just, I know what you did. You just put that on your hand, didn't you? You just did that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was like that old Robert Mitchum movie. Yeah, right. Where you have uh, love and hate. Of, right, of right. Uh, but it, it, it uh, you know, I mean, I just, I just don't understand why people get tattoos. I, I would never get one. Unless I had, like, if I had a child and I wanted to put my child's name on me, I would, because that would be something that would follow me through. I wouldn't put a woman's name on me. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> I have enough experience. I know they don't, they come and go real fast, okay? Uh, I might put Marjorie on here because uh, that, that one's probably going to last me the rest of my life, which could be about a minute and a half. Uh, <laughs> you know. That one. Huh? How do you feel, Alex, about like all that Sanskrit, like Lady Gaga and like those actresses? They have all this crazy Sanskrit writing. Well, that makes more and... sense than you know, uh, 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 you know, a picture of Roy Rogers and Dale Evans, you know, <laughs> right, or something like that. You know, at least it has something that makes a statement. Mm -hmm. uh, um... <laughs> and it's really small. It's very, you can barely see that it's writing. I, I, it's along, tiny. along her bikini line, or above her uh, pubic line, rather. I knew Somebody, a woman. I knew a woman uh, that actually years ago had the um, uh, name Picasso 
uh, tattooed across her pubic line. Just the uh, weirdest tattoo. And it was his. It was his signature. It was the one that was in paintings. And she she used to make a big deal about him. Oh, my my pussy's been signed by Picasso. Uh, <laughs> it's a work of art. Yeah. Yes. You ever, you yes. Ever Ray, any, Ray had you know, his hand up. Ray had his hand up earlier, and I oh, got sorry. to him. I just want Alex. For me, like growing up in the city, there were so many sailors around all the time, and uh, uh, like Harley Davidson guys, and those were the only ones that had tattoos. Yeah. Yeah. And that's all I think about in my head. It's like. I can't ever get a tattoo because I just associate it with sailors and biker dudes. Well, I never had anything also meaningful enough that I wanted to put on me that I that I'd say, "Hey, twenty years from now, I won't regret this." Exactly. And, and I'm not. And that is not, as I said, uh, my experience has told me, don't make it a woman because you're you're going to regret that. You know, when the tramp stamps were really uh, at their height of popularity, I remember Saturday Night Live had this skit. When people the, the, they had everyone get really old and their tramp stamps were sagging, <laughs> and you know they're like sagging down to their butts and stuff. It was really funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they had some issue. They had to try to figure out how to fix it. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's what's going to be fun. Like you know, I'll live you know maybe twenty some more years and thirty years, and I'll be able to see some tattooed people and that are like twenty now. What they look like when they're like fifty or something. You know, does, does it hurt to get a tattoo? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I would imagine it's, it's painful. painful. I I don't I wouldn't. Uh, do you have a tattoo, Patrick? I've got four of them. Really? Yeah. What what are, what, what are where are they? Yeah, what do they say? Uh, Star Wars. Wars. No. Okay. Oh, there's one. Of course. Yeah. And there's one up above, and then down around your legs, you have something that says "out of order," right? Out of order. <laughs> <laughs> got two. That's a military, like right? Body, shoulder. Yeah. Uh, now, did that hurt? No. What? And I hate needles. But um, when I got my first tattoo, it was three years after I got paralyzed. And the motto that I've lived by, and I'm sure some of you know this just from my Facebook post and that, mm -hmm. is only easy day was yesterday. And that's the Navy SEAL motto. Yeah. And it was something that motivated me when I got paralyzed. And I decided that I wanted that tattooed on me as a reminder. And the symbol for my favorite Star Wars character, Boba Fett, is something that I always liked. So I combined the two of them, and that was my first tattoo. So I asked my cousin, who was tatted up, the one with the knuckles and all that, mm -hmm. and that it's going to hurt about the first minute, and then... You pass out. It, you're, <laughs> like the, the adrenaline um, just starts up, and it just kind of numbs the area. And you just, it just gets annoying, and that's all it is. It really, it's but just, where, you got it, where you got it, Patrick, it's not that painful. Like if you do it on your ankle, I think it's thin uh, there. I, I, I got or, something for you. Wherever there are uh, nerves, it hurts. What happens if tomorrow is easier than today? <laughs> it never is. <laughs> You're going to have hey, to have it removed. Yeah. Hey, uh, you know, it's just fake news then. Uh, you know, I, I picked up this girl at Perry's back I in the 70s. It. And we went back to my apartment and, uh, in, in the city. And uh, we started doing the dirty deed. Well, she had a tattoo around her ass of a rose. So her anus, you know, the opening, there was a there was a rose tattooed around it. So I asked, you know, does it hurt? Because how, you know, you think it hurt on the ankle? Uh, you know, what would it do if the inside of the rose was your asshole and there was the leaves of the rose around it? Years, years ago, I did an uh, yeah. I produced an album called Songs That Mar Made America Famous with Pat Skye. And uh, we created uh, a, a, an album cover that was kind of in bad taste, with <coughs> people throwing up on it and so on. And then for the album itself, we um, uh, made a... You remember Apple Records? Remember what it looked like? Well, yeah. instead, yeah. we made it a butt. And we put the hole for the album right in the where the asshole goes. <laughs> yes, yeah. Nah. So, yeah. Uh, 
this gal had to be, uh, uh, you know, pretty tough <laughs> to, to get a tattoo of a rose around her anus. Yeah, well, I just, you know, uh, yes, Jeff, who has lots of tattoos. Yes, Jeff? I have no tattoos. <laughs> but I have uh, surgical tattoos. What? Some, some uh, surgical tattoos. Cut, <laughs> cut here? Yeah, cut here. <laughs> cut on dotted line. Cut on dotted Little line. Like, yeah. <laughs> like cutting out coupons. Yeah. Yeah. They they cost a lot more than the tattoos yeah. you guys are talking about. Oh, do you actually have tattoos that are medical tattoos? No, no, oh, no. Okay. What I'm saying is I do have enough scars in certain spots that look like a tattoo. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I can always remember my cousins who were uh had tattoos from uh, World War II in being in Germany. And they had a, a number on there. Remember that? Yeah. Oh, those tattoos. The on Jack, the forearms. Did Jack Garfine? No. Did Jack Garfine have? No? No. Uh, he explained to me that um, he didn't. It, why did he say why he didn't have one? He said that not everybody got a tattoo, oddly Ooh. enough. Uh, Some got a Buick? No, that that he was <laughs> uh, they got tongue piercing. He was too young or something, and they didn't uh, they didn't <laughs> tattoo the young kids or whatever. Uh, but that he got in some camps they tattooed them, other camps they didn't. My friend's father was twelve when he went into the camp, and he got a tattoo. Was Jack younger than that? And he was in Auschwitz, and Jack uh, was other... in. Uh, was Jack was in the went into the camps? I think, if I remember correctly, at thirteen. If I oh. if I if memory serves mm. me correctly, I'd have to go back. Did, did they make him work, or what, what did they assign him? To well, do? he said he was fifteen to them. Oh, okay. So they put him on a work detail. If he had said he was younger, they would have sent him to the gas chamber. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, and God, uh, yeah. so he. Uh, he managed to lie. In fact, you heard the story where he met up with Mengele. And, oh, yeah, and, yeah. And, and nice Ma boy. And, and Mengele was uh, <laughs> saying, you go over there, you go over there. If you went over there, you were going to the gas chambers. If you are going over there, you were going to a work party. And he said, so, young boy, how old are you? And his mother told him, no matter who asks you, say mm -hmm. you're like 15. So he said, I'm 15. And the, he said, okay, nice boy, pinched him on the cheek or touched him on the cheek and said go over there and so he went over there and as he was going over there capo said come with me and he said wait a minute i gotta go back and tell that nice man i'm not really 15 yeah. and the and the and the capo said keep moving All right he said so that guy saved my life and in a by 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 a way of doing it so did mengala yeah. Now the capo was a was a prisoner, a Jewish prisoner, a Jewish right? prisoner who yes. Yes, did did the bidding of the, you know, Nazis. Yeah. Nazis. They were they were. And that now was Jack. Alive, yeah. Jack said he was a Zionist, or uh, his father was a Zionist. His father was a Zionist. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, this, did he have the same uh, feelings about uh, Zionism in Israel I, as? Uh, I've, I've I've never gotten into that really heavily with him, but he didn't seem like he was particularly a Zionist because I've told him that I wasn't fond fond of Zionism. Did you tell him that Susan's father was, uh, what was he? A uh, Yeah, we talked bund. about that. I mentioned that to him. Yeah. The Bund. Yeah. yeah. Zero socialist Yeah, bund. the Bund. Yeah. Uh, which were the, we kind of the, the political enemies of, mm. uh, of the. Uh, of, like uh, Trump uh, and Schumer. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, worse. I mean, yeah. they really politically, they had two entirely different philosophies of how you were going to survive um, uh, the Holocaust and how you were how how after the fact, the, the you know the uh, Zionists their their theory was we're going to go back to Israel. You know, we're going to go. They never lived in Israel. They were used to living in you know in cities in Germany and Poland and so on, but. The the uh, Bundes believed that you didn't want to put all your Jews in one basket, as it were, that you spread Jews all over the face of the earth into a diaspora, be, and, but the one thing you take with you is your culture. And so books and music and everything were a very important part of, uh, of, of, the, Bund, of the Jewish socialist Bundes. 
And so they created a lot of Yiddish theater and music and so on and said, as long as we have that and as long as we have the culture, we can be anywhere in the world. So there were two entirely different theories on how you do this. And I think the Bundists were right because you got all your Jews in one basket and look what's happening. You know, so. Uh, no, nah, the Jews it was it's what's 13 million Jews. What's there? Four million in, in Israel. So that, you know, that means uh, nine there's a lot, or, there, there uh, spread about nine, out. nine million of us annoying people elsewhere. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, right. Wow. It, uh, nine million more to make cheap jokes about, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Why I, are the I, Jews I, I wish. so persecuted over time? Uh, well, I one time I said something on oh. the air. People, I said it in New York, too. I said, you know, the Nazis tried to kill us. Pharaoh wouldn't let us stay. It, ch it chased us out of Egypt. Um, uh, do you have an idea we're doing something that pisses people off? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I want to know. <laughs> Bell Barth had a joke. He used to say, the Jews are the chosen people, but why won't they choose someone else yeah, once yeah, in a while? Well, I'll tell you the reason, the reason why Jews are hated uh, throughout the world in many cases uh, somebody mentioned this the other day, and it was the best theory I've ever heard about it, is it, you blame it on the Bible. Because uh, people have been led to believe that the Jews killed Christ. Ah, uh, yeah. And that's where the whole anti-Semitism started. Right. Now, the fact is they the, also Jew, the Jews didn't, didn't kill Christ because, you know, Christ was a Jew. What? Uh, they didn't participate in the Crusades, so they were still home while all the Christian men were out uh, spreading spreading the gospel well, during the Crusades. Well, by then, though, the Christians had this idea about Jews as being the per people that killed Christ. Yeah. You know. And That's so true. My, my grandmother, you know, even before uh, Vatican II, the, the Catholic Church conspired <laughs> with the Nazis. And my grandmother, I hate to say this, I mean, she just, she thought Jewish people were going to hell. When I was growing up, I was friends with a Catholic kid, O'Hanlon, and yeah. O'Hanlon said to me, "Your people killed Christ." And they and I said, "Where'd you hear that?" And he says, uh, "They tell us in church, you know." Yeah, they used to. Yeah. 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 I, I, when I was growing up in North Beach, I mean, yeah. kids would say, "There's the Christ killer." Yeah. And I go, "Well, I really didn't have anything to do with it, you know." I mean, all those Italians. I, I, I this wasn't around my time. But all those Italians would say that to you. Yeah, but I, you know, so that's where I think anti-Semitism comes from. And you can't say that Islamic people are anti-Semitic because, in fact, they, they, are, Semitic. they are Semitic. It, it, it came from Bobby O'Hanlon. That's where all of it came from. Bobby O'Hanlon? <laughs> Yeah, in, in the Bronx. In the Bronx. Yeah, he was okay. the one that said, the Jew, Jews, uh, you, you killed Christ, you're Jewish. <laughs> yeah, well, I kept I, when, when kids would say that to me, I'd say, "Yeah," and if he comes back, we do it again. Mm. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, uh, but the, no, I mean, uh, the the fact is that uh, the uh, it, uh, Islamics don't really hate Jews because the, the, uh, theology wise, they are similar, very similar. Uh, Abraham. Uh, yeah, but they all come from Abraham, yes. Yeah. Uh, but they are very similar uh, because um, uh, we both believe in a single God, you know. See, and if we would have turned left, we would have gotten the oil. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, oh, well. But instead, we only got enough to then, take. Then we could have just th hated the but, Arabs. But then we only got enough for one day. But it lasted eight, so we eight. were very mm. frugal with it. So, yeah. yeah. And thank you, folks. I just, I just did the Passover uh, radle, dissertation. Radle, radle. Well, Why is this night more special than any other the night? Four questions. Well, that, that's that, that's, uh, that's oh, well, it's Hanukkah now. Uh, Passover is, is coming up. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, we're we're going to be back again next week uh, for the last week until the Christmas break that we traditionally take around here. So I hope you guys will be back. I want you to notice that uh, Jeff has been here this evening. We're taking roll here. Uh, Charlene Martinez has been here tonight. Uh, Patrick Blazik, the man of many tattoos, has been with us this evening. Phil Meyer didn't even get us mad tonight because we never, I don't think we mentioned Trump once tonight, maybe for a second. 
Huh? Raid 7. Raid 7. <laughs> yeah, Alex Nothing. Uh, and and uh, thank you very much, Rob. And thank you to Ray. If all of you would give a nice wave goodbye, I'll wave goodbye to you too. Okay? There they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, and uh, uh, hopefully they'll be back again next week. Next week, where, as I say, we're doing a whole week of uh, shows. And then there's nothing uh, between um, fr- next Friday night and uh, uh, the third of, uh, the, rather, the second of December, uh, January. Uh, what am I saying? See, that's how I'm going wacko. Anyway, that's it for tonight, folks. That uh, winds it up. Uh, we're going to be back again uh, on Mon- on Tuesday, uh, same t- uh, and then uh, right after us now. Can I do this? Start this all over again. Right, right after us now is Jack Bishop in the Intersection, a very fine program, and that will be followed by absolutely nothing except our twenty four seven replaying of all the programs. We'll be back again Tuesday night, right after the exchange with Damian Chaplin at 9.30 Eastern Time. We'll be here at 10, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, you know what to do. Tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye.